Hello. <laughs> no sale on white pandas. <laughs> well, what people asking about? So, so, I don't know. This is the first thing I saw. Uh, Harold has the socks on. The yeah. comma socks. The infamous That's comma so socks. Nice. Check it out. This isn't selling you guys. I don't know. I don't wow. know what will. I don't know how to this <laughs> modeling. I feel like if you're just on the floor and like we just look at them, that works too. Yeah. <laughs> Make well, driving chill. Down. <laughs> that's also upside down. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, that's nice. That should have been the thumbnail. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go for a stream. Talk about the Black Friday sale. How are the, how are the socks, Harold? Are they comfortable? Oh, they're unbelievably comfortable. You don't even understand. <laughs> I can feel the comma three through my toes. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so for those who don't know, there's a... Uh, you have the curl out here? Nice. Yeah, it's right there. It's a Black Friday sale going on, and it's uh, very exciting because it's the first sale ever on the Comma 3. It's definitely the best time to get a Comma 3. If there's ever been a good time to get one, it is now, and I'm still locked out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you out there? Here it is. It's a Comma 3. <laughs> All right. So, Comma 3 is $200 off for Black Friday, which is wild. Uh, so it's 1999, under 2000. The cheapest comma three ever. If there is ever a time to get a comma three. Now is it? Oh yeah. You guys know historically, Black Friday sales have been the cheapest time to get comma devices. That's never gonna change. Yep. So uh, if you've so, been considering it, I recommend now's the time. Oh, and this is also uh, our end-to-end -end branch over here. Made some improvements since last time, so go for a drive we can talk about that and just the general progress we've been making in research a little update yeah we ship all over the world uh ship with dhl <laughs> oh, stop for that one didn't get that yet um but yeah so 200 off a comma three and then 100 off a comma two if you happen to want one but really you should get a comma three during this sale if you're mm -hmm. at all thinking about it if you have a supported car it's really a no-brainer it's open pilot's amazing it is really amazing and uh, yeah, if you've got uh, if you've got too many devices, you know, there's always a, another purpose. You can get a comma body that was come out. Yeah, I'm very excited about those. Sometime next year, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of unknowns about it, but uh, it should be pretty exciting. All right. Yeah. So it, let us know in the chat if you uh, buy a comma three during the the sale during the stream right now, and we'll we'll shout you out. Uh, yeah, what else should we should we talk about? Just some, some general updates? Yeah, on, give uh, some updates research. on research, what everyone's working on over there. Yeah, so we uh, just released, we're just in the process of releasing 0811. That's mostly just some bug fixes and uh, nothing too big, but we've got a lot of cool things in the works. We were working on new sounds. You guys can check that out if you want. There's some branches with the new sounds. Should sound a lot better on the Comma 3. So those are pretty exciting. Um, then our research were we're working a lot on end-to-end -end longitudinal. This is uh, maybe the latest iteration of that. Um, we've got some pretty good improvements coming to the lateral models. The big, big complaints about that were uh, the exit diving and like it not really behaving well around exits in general, even if it doesn't take it, just kind of swerving towards it. And we, we made some really good improvements uh, to that. Mitchell uh, found some pretty cool tricks. We're just still in the process of verifying some stuff. It's always a big process to make sure there's no regressions, but that's looking very, very good. And it's going to be just improvements in lateral all around. Uh, and especially the exit behavior should be so much improved. Yeah. We found a, Mitchell made a data set of uh, some 20 complaints of just like it, it having issues around exits and then the new model and those specific. All right, we're back. You didn't miss anything. We're just still, still driving. <laughs> still driving. Oh, so yeah, it drops is, up. This is end to end. This is uh, the machine learning deciding how fast to drive here. I mean, I was just kind of following this car, so I guess it's relatively easy, but we'll see later on some turns. It should hopefully slow down appropriately and get to see some, uh, some of the real AI in action. That'd be exciting. Uh, what branch is this? Someone asked. I mean, if, if you have to ask, I'd recommend you don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. See if you can find it yourself. 
what's the purpose of the Pama body? It stands there. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. It stands there. That's it. <laughs> Oh, what's some of them? Oh, we've also really been. There's been a lot of complaints about just general how open pile longitudinal is and stop and go. Um, so I've been trying to work on that and seeing if we can come up with a better policy that matches more like the kind of drive humans do in stop and go and should hopefully be a lot more comfortable. I think in, on the highway, our longitudinal policy with lead cars is really quite good, but in stop and go, I think there's still a lot of things to be improved. So working actively on that as well. That's super exciting. Yeah. Can you tell we're in the Corolla because of the road noise? <laughs> yeah, it's so loud. It's very loud, very loud car. Uh, this is nice though. This is a, like a pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. Pretty right? comfortable follow distance. It's it's definitely closer than uh, Open Pilot is today, but it, you know, this guy's going pretty slow, so it makes sense. Yeah, so I'm gonna drive into it. Um, yeah. Any any work on big model going on in the research team? Oh yeah, so we're working on big model. I mean, big model's been this thing that's been pushed off because every time we tried it, we didn't really see much benefit from it. Like, and you know, if we can't see that big model would improve a lot of the cases that open pilot is having trouble, then I mean, why would we spend our time, you know, doing that when we could be doing other things? Right. So, um, but now that with the end-to-end -end longitudinal, you need the big model to see the lights, for example, to go from a, from a stopped uh, stopped light to when it turns green. So now there's there's more incentive to go for the big model. So we're working on that again. Um, I think it'll actually ship this time. What do you think? I think so. I mean, there's a lot of work involved, but I think now there's really a compelling reason to work on it because of the uh, because of what we mentioned, the yeah. uh, the green light problem. I mean, just in general, for longitudinal, having context is is quite quite useful. So I was actually intending to take this exit, but I mean, you know, didn't really want to take over. So we'll just we'll just see where it takes us. Yeah, you can see it's been doing all this slow down, it's been doing all the speed management around these turns, That's and so far cool. it's fine. Maybe it doesn't have enough Ooh, look at that! Turn. Oh, it did, it, yeah. It slowed down a bit. Yeah, it slowed down for this turn. Hey, this is all just the model doing it. Um, I haven't taken over, I mean, since we got on the highway, so... Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I think this is very promising. This is that's super promising right there. Yeah. That was that was amazing. I don't remember it ever working <laughs> for any turn. So. Oh yeah, no, we definitely made some improvements, I think, since last time you... Uh, drove it. It's a little bit slow to get up to speed like this, for example. It really should should be a bit more aggressive about it, but uh, it's not, not unsafe. It's just a bit, you know, not the speed that I would drive. Right. Car detected in blind spot. Pretty cool. Part of that's also because it just doesn't have the big model view, so it doesn't really have the context as much about the cars moving around it, since it only sees, like, straight ahead. If it saw the cars passing it, it's usually a bit more inspired to go faster. Yeah, that makes sense. Man, that's super cool. And you're telling me N10 Longitudinal will eventually come to comma threes everywhere, hopefully. Yeah, in the I future. mean, it's, it's going to be kind of an experimental process to see how we can ship it and, and which parts that we be shipped because, I mean, you don't just want to ship full end-to-end -end because that comes with some disadvantages. Um, but, yeah, maybe we'll ship behind a toggle first or something. When I think the easiest feature that I think I want to ship first is uh, when you go from a stop, if there's a stopped car in front of you and he accelerates, there's a limit to how fast the open pile accelerates now just because of you know we want comfortable cruise acceleration um, but with end to end we can see if the model is asking for a lot more acceleration we can increase those limits so then the cruise should still be comfortable because the model knows that like cruise acceleration um, but then when there's a stopped car pulling away yeah, it will be more aggressive i think people really like that that's i think a big source of disengagements for myself as well yeah me too that would be amazing uh, so yeah you can get this comma three, not this exact one, but you can get a comma three for nineteen ninety nine from now until Cyber Monday. So you know, really uh, better to get it sooner rather than later. I'd say um, if you get it sooner rather than later, you'll get those cool comma socks that Harold showed off at the beginning mm. of the stream. We have a very limited amount of those, and uh, yeah, there's they're sixty nine dollar value. So go ahead and. Oh, it's such a steal! Like the though. socks, two hundred dollars off, and the socks. Yeah, I mean, it could have oh been God. could have been no deal and just socks, and it would have still been I know. the best deal on a comma three. So, so, yeah, guys, the best best price you'll ever get for a comma three. Get it now. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, they'll be shipping in one to two weeks. Uh, we're working on making them right now, so we sold a lot <laughs> so far. Oh yeah, two K socks. Two K socks. You get a free comma three. Yeah.
I don't know if the socks are worth that much. Maybe they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Is there anything else we should uh, talk about? Or? Yeah. Anyone have any questions about what research is working on or anything? Yeah. Oh, this is any technical a, questions. This is a turn. Oh. Well, doesn't have the torque for this, so yeah. I'm gonna tiny bit. I, but I think the you know the speed it took it was pretty reasonable. Yeah. I mean, look, I still haven't disengaged since I got on the highway. That's um, impressive, yeah. yeah. Cut that guy off, but you know. <laughs> the model's not generous. But yeah, I mean, look at this. Isn't this incredible? This is, incredible. This is incredible. the power of machine learning, guys. You guys label this data by driving the speeds you guys like. And now the model has a little bit of piece of every one of you. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a distributed, uh, distributed driving. Yeah, I'm really impressed right now because, I mean, this almost looks like a highway. Obviously, we can tell, and I'm sure the model can tell, that it's not uh, because it doesn't have more lanes. You know, there's sidewalks and things. You so can see the speed's been set at, uh, you know, 70. So, oh, here, potentially. I guess we're going on a turn. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's not going to make the turn, but it did slow down for it. Oh, so wow. It's got, it's got that going for it. All right, let me take over here. Um, wow, that was impressive. We, had, we were engaged for so gonna, long. I'm also going to go to... Set up some nav. Someone asked somewhere how yes. <laughs> that I'm aware of where we're going. And somehow I ended close to the beach. Makes sense. I have no clue where we are, but that's okay. But look at this. Isn't this incredible? This is incredible. <laughs> wow, there's so many stopped cars around, so it's. All right, we'll take over for this left slower. turn here. Yeah, someone asked how navigate on open pilots coming. That's really pushed back until we get end to end longitudinal and uh, in, a, in a good state. Because at that point, really, all you have to do is, uh, you know, put in the navigation directions. But until then, it would be difficult to take, you know, exits and everything by itself if it can't slow down properly. I mean, yeah, if it can take, like, aggressive turns by itself, it's kind of unclear how useful navigate on open pilot is. So we kind of want to get that working first. Yeah. But as you can see, we're working very hard on that, so... This is this is the best demo yet. It yeah. barely worked before. <laughs> well, we were working on it. It's making progress. Yeah, I did slow down for that turn. Yeah, fully. No, but yeah, the really powerful thing about this idea is it, it costs us so much less time to improve this because, I mean, if the model's doing all the work, it's just trying to figure out how you guys drive and then trying to mimic that. We don't have to hand tune any follow distances or anything like that. It's a little bit lazy here, but... As well, help it again for this turn, but longitudinal, we'll just let it do its thing. That's yeah, pretty good. There you it's... go, yeah. We'll see if we can get back on the highway and everything without, uh, yeah, without, without it doing anything crazy. Here's the turn by turn directions, which you get on a comma three. Pretty cool. If you have Prime, you can just, uh, you know, put in an address on, on the comma connect website and it goes right up to the comma three wirelessly. Yeah, it's like pretty magic. good actually, use it quite a lot. That is really good. Especially just if you just hack and set your work all the time. It's usually where I'm going anyway. This is a comfortable stop too, Harold. Yeah, so I mean, this is the beautiful thing about this end-to-end -end longitudinal stuff is we've really been struggling with finding like follow distances and cost functions that, uh, you know, a human finds comfortable. It's very unclear what humans optimize for when they come to like a full stop or when they're controlling the brakes. But uh, here the model is just figuring out what humans do and, and trying to mimic it. So we don't have to do any like any work just trying to figure out what humans find comfortable braking and it just does it all itself. So that's why we can get so much more like natural feeling stops and braking behavior without actually having to tune anything. Which oh, is really the cool. beauty of, of, of it all. Yeah, we're looking at end-to-end -end longitudinal. Again, it like slowed down before the lead triangle came. Like there was some stop traffic up ahead and it started slowing down before the, the radar picked it up. That's oh yeah, cool. for sure, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's, it can definitely tell like if it sees like a big blob of cars and red lights that, you know, it's probably a good idea to start slowing down. I mean, that's what we do as humans as well. Yeah, someone asked, is it using radar or pure vision? So on this branch, it's, almost exclusively vision but there are some extreme limits the radar sets but in this drive we've pretty much never hit those so basically everything you've seen so far is vision only end to end basically no no lead policy being involved and no uh, no radar super cool 
again, if, if I don't know if, if this hasn't sold you on getting a comma three, I don't know what will. I mean, it's doing an amazing job. Yeah, guys, I think, I mean, this is some of the realest AI you can experience today. Yeah. I'm not sure what other products you can get out here that uh, that have like this kind of real world AI that you can just use and like Google voice recognition, but that's not as cool. Sea world. <laughs> I didn't get those sounds on the branch. I want to see if we can get those on so you guys can experience those. Oh, yeah. Nah, it just doesn't have the torque here. But... <laughs> I'm going to accelerate here. A little slow. But also, like, I feel like the model view of this is probably, like, <laughs> yeah, very unusable. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what the big model is going to be for. Like, it just doesn't see the turn. It has no idea if you're coming to a stop or coming onto an on-ramp. So hopefully big model will really uh, give it that context. Yeah. I don't know, is there any other questions people have about Black Friday or the stuff we're working on, anything like that? Yeah, did anyone buy right now? Because it's a, it's a great time to get a Comma 3. I just You should check the, the car list again because we support over 150 vehicles now. So even if your car uh, wasn't supported in the past, I mean, we support so many cars, it's ridiculous. So many modern Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, uh, Toyotas, Hondas, we even support a Mazda now. It's a new brand port that's coming out with 0811. Uh, so, it, yeah, the list just keeps growing for cars that work with Open Pilot. Really exciting. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's having a bad experience and wants to work on the tune of their car, Codmus made a tool that makes it really easy to uh, kind of see if the tune of your car is bad and if there's anything you can do about it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, if anyone's willing to give that a shot or thinks their car could improve some tuning, give it a, a check. Yeah. Somewhere in the open pilot repo, some tuning scripts. Someone asked if it would slow down if uh, you're going alongside like slower cars. I mean, humans do that, so that's oh, the goal, yeah, right? For sure. I mean, you've seen this drive most of the time, open pilot is engaged. And I mean, this set speed set to 80 miles an hour, so it's just driving exactly how fast it wants. I was driving 40 miles an hour on this kind of road here. I mean, that's all just all just learned and it definitely will slow down around other traffic as well which is I mean really the promising thing about it it's just so annoying that if the lead cuts out then it just floors it even if there's cars around so very, yeah very promising very promising yeah if you order now uh, it'll ship in one to two weeks you know we're gonna do our best to get them out as soon as possible but give a little leeway just in case uh, but yeah we'll be working hard on on that yeah a lot of VW cars <laughs> there are <laughs> Yeah, do those all have long tunnels as well? Or Not yet. Jason's working on it. <laughs> but they have some just stock long tunnel. Yes. Jason, maybe this will inspire you. You're already working on it, so <laughs> <laughs> keep it up. Yeah. yeah, so here you can see in this case, like there's no other cars around. This is all just what the model thinks is a good idea. Yeah, and this is perfect. Real machine learning, guys. Real machine learning. There's no bicycle detectors, there's no cone detectors, no car, I mean, I guess there are car detectors, but they're supposed to not be doing anything. Yeah, just, just the model in the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the freest the model has ever been. We removed all the cages. <laughs> just a free model on the open road. I haven't even got a wheel shot yet because of how where the mic is. So I got a wheel shot so everyone can see. We're not faking it. There's some some barriers coming up here. I'm just gonna oh, yeah, be ready should, to take over. You should maybe nudge that a little bit. Oops. No, I just wanted to be ready. Felt a little bit uncomfortable when you get so close. Yeah. Hit torque limit. What are people saying? Let's see. Jason said he's gonna put the N10 lawn branch and drive it in about 20 minutes. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit jerky still. I think we haven't really worked on like the, the load, the, the tuning, more just making sure that the models kind of work architecturally, but made some good progress on that. Yep. But yeah, end to end guys, end to end. It's uh, been Coma's dream since day one. I think we've got the lateral part mostly done. Um, and now it's part for time for part two. It's probably the most exciting part because that means it's going to be complete. Yeah. Yes, the, the socks are still in stock. <laughs> That's hard to say, but the socks are still in stock. So I mean, place your order now. Left. 
not that many socks left. Not that many. Not socks that many. Left. I don't have an exact number, but there's not many socks left, and we're not ordering more socks either. So, uh, someone asked if you're using the road texture for anything. Uh, yeah, if you if you check out the new repo, depth 10k, right? Yeah, depth 10k. I'm just gonna take over here. It's a, again can't see much, but yeah, I'll probably feel the view problem again. Yeah. Depth 10K is pretty cool because the, with the Comma 3 cameras, you can see road texture, you can see, you know, potholes, everything. Uh, you could never see these things with the Comma 2 camera, it was just so blurry. Uh, so, yeah, Comma, what's the what's the goal of Depth 10K if you were to explain it, Harold? Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, we just wanted to open source the data set so that people can also, you know, train depth nets. Like, it's appealing to a lot of people that are interested in machine learning and, I mean, the kind of driving models are not that accessible to either train or, or really work on. But stuff like the depth net and the segnet you can do yourself. And uh, I mean, we're very interested in depth nets because there's quite a few reasons depth nets are useful. One is that for a model to understand the depth of the scene, it also has to understand its own motion or can give you information about its own motion. So it's a you can if you train the depth nets end to end, it's a completely end to end way of understanding the motion of the car and the road which can be a very helpful tool for just processing in general. Um, that's one part. And the other is if we understand the depth of the scene, we can make a 3D map of the scene and move the camera around uh, for simulation. So I don't know if you guys have seen like the simulator that we train in. We train in a simulator where you can kind of move the car around so that it, you can kind of deviate from the trajectory the human drove. And with depth nets, you can have very good reconstructions when you move the camera, which uh, I mean, the better the reconstruction is, the better uh, the model will train. So that's kind of the motivation there. For localization in like an end-to-end -end machine learning way and for uh, simulation. Cool. Yeah, that's a great explanation. Some people were just asking what end-to-end -end is. It basically just means uh, drive like a human, you know? It's the easiest way to put it if you really boil it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if I, if for this drive, I mean, basically, if what we would normally be driving an open pilot, it, we explicitly detect the car with the machine learning model, and then we keep some distance away from that car, depending on our speed and their speed. And then the end-to-end -end way is we just train a model to understand how fast humans drive and how humans accelerate and decelerate, and then just tries to mimic that. So this entire drive, even right now, uh, open pilot has been trying to mimic what a human would have done in these cases, which is completely different from the non-end-to-end -end way, which is just detect the lead car and stay some distance away from them. You can see here, for example, that the lead car is pulling away, and this is much larger than the following distance you would usually keep. But because there is relatively slow-moving traffic around, it's not really incentivized to speed up. Uh, and this is exactly what we want. We don't want the lead here to pull away and then you to floor it past and overtake cars on the left. Um, so that's kind of the beauty of this whole end-to-end -end thing. Yeah, this really is with the flow of everybody. Yeah, it's... Like, we're not, we're not going, like, 80 past all these people. It does get that pretty well. I'm just going to floor it here soon. Merge conflicts. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Yeah, but that was great. Did you see the flood, Harold? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty Our highway flooded. <laughs> it's just closed. Yeah. <laughs> Wild stuff. Um, what a successful drive. So uh, yeah, coming soon to Comma 3s, you know, with that wide, uh, that wide camera, it's really going to help us do more cool stuff on the research department. Soon TM. Soon, soon TM. TM. Well, this guy didn't indicate. The model's supposed to understand that. But you know how, like, when he merged over, like, he didn't slam the brakes either. No. I mean, it's, oh, it's going to be super smooth, right? This is also going to be as smooth as humans are. The problem with the end-to-end -end policy is kind of hard to make it aggressive and it needs to be aggressive, make it smooth and it needs to be smooth. With the, I mean with the normal lead policy. With the end-to-end, -end, it's just figure it out. Yep. Yeah, someone was like saying how is it, uh, how, how is it like conveyed what the model's doing and you know we, we hired a, a UI UX person recently, sent an offer. Uh, so I think you know when everything's full end-to-end -end, the UI might look different than it looks today. Yeah. So you got to convey what the model thinks, you know, like the path is really good at that for lateral, I think. But yeah, there's, there's probably some way to do that for longitudinal, so stay tuned. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever played Drift 3, but you know, when you play on like coach mode or whatever, it shows you the path, it shows if you got to accelerate or decelerate. I don't know, I'm not a designer. That sounds that's cool. That's what though. I have in mind. <laughs> yeah, me too, that's what I was thinking. <laughs>
No, but it's true. It's, we, we do have to convey pretty clearly what the model's thinking. You know, we're moving away from these kind of literal clues, like uh, cues, like lane lines at cars, and to something more holistic. And then, I mean, there are ways we can ask the model about why it's doing things, but it's just got to figure out how to convey that clearly. Yep. Yeah, I guess we can do one more recap. Uh, the Black Friday sale's going now until Cyber Monday, but the socks are very limited. If you want to get free socks, uh, <laughs> you want to show show a sock? Not yet. Let me keep my right foot ready for uh, for a takeover here. But uh... there it is, <laughs> driving chill. Yeah. The other side has a comma on it. Go to the beginning of the stream if you want to see that. <laughs> Um, they're really good socks. Yeah, the socks aren't in the store right now. You can only get the socks by getting a comma two or comma three during the Black Friday sale. And it's $200 off a comma three. That's the cheapest the comma three is ever going to be. So if you're at all on the fence, you have a car, you want to upgrade from an Eon, comma two, whatever. I think now's the best time to do that. And uh, yeah, definitely get one yeah. if you're interested. I mean, Great stuff is coming in the future. Great. I'm excited, guys. I'm really excited. I think you guys should be excited, too. I mean, you guys have seen this drive. I took over only only maybe like five to ten times. It slowed down for turns. It slowed down for traffic, like a human, all by itself. Um, I, think, I think it's just the future, guys. This is the future, and it's it's coming. All the future this, is you know, now. Oh, it's not seeing this. Oh, it doesn't see him. Or does it? Oh, it sees it now. <laughs> well, it managed to do it. Nice. <laughs> Got a merge, no problem. Someone said, I love mine. Yeah, but it's a beautiful device. It really is. The screen's really nice. The cameras are super high quality. Uh, you know, there's a reason it costs so much. Uh, it's, it's a very high quality device. You know, custom designed yeah, hardware. Not cheap to make these quantities. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Would buy it if I didn't have a common two. Well, yeah, any new people, you just got a common three. You know, it's amazing. But if you haven't ever tried open pilot and you're like man i i don't know i really need to experience it for myself we still are offering the the try a two upgrade to a comma three program so you can buy a comma two right now try it for up to 90 days and if at any point within those 90 days you're like oh i want a comma three i should have got that uh you can just pay the difference so that's a pretty cool program too on comma.ai slash compare but i would just get a comma three at this price come on it's never gonna be this price it's never so the guy's asking, like, when is this coming? Have we ever answered a question with a date like that? <laughs> it's I'm coming. so hopeful that... <laughs> coming in 61 days. <laughs> it's going to release. Yeah. <laughs> this is all experimental, guys. We wanted to come as soon as possible. <laughs> but, uh, yes. I mean, we're, we're pretty transparent about what we're working on. The end-to-end -end longitudinal is a big push right now. So, I mean, more, it's more likely features like that are going to come out before Navigate on OpenPilot. I mean, and then I think... Once like highway slowdown for turns and exit taking is really, really good, I think then navigate an open pilot makes really a lot of sense as the next step. But guys, I mean, we've never given really t timelines or deadlines. We're trying as hard as we can. Uh, it's all very experimental. It's very hard to uh, have exact timelines when nobody's ever done anything before like this, so. Yeah, there's real people working on it. <laughs> yeah. So we're not just like, <laughs> keep it in a branch somewhere yeah, and never, exactly. never touch it again. We're actively working on it, um, so it's very exciting doesn't break for green lights it goes right through them it does yeah it goes through stop signs sometimes too so i guess that <laughs> needs to be worked on but yes. hopefully the field of view will help yes any plans to remove set speed in the future i mean yeah, no that's... you always want to be able to tell the maximum speed you don't want to just go wild <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah, you really need a car with lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. Uh, there's some people who've gotten really old cars to work, but you basically need to put in a, a new electric uh, power steering rack and everything. No, nope, we don't brake for overpass either. Yeah, <laughs> overpass, I mean, that's a, I don't know, that's a common radar problem, right? Because there's, most radars, they don't tell you the altitude that a uh, metal object is being detected. So, you know, for example, the overpass right in front of us has uh, metal on the railing. Um, and unless you filter that out somehow for the radar that looks exactly the same as a stopped car right ahead of you so that's why this can be an issue but i mean we've since uh since i don't know quite a long time over a year now two years basically always had the vision model decide um whether there is a lead car in front of you or not and um which uh car that's detected by the model would match to a certain radar point so everything's really controlled by the vision and by the model so that's what, i mean that's why we don't really have those kind of radar only false positives yep 
Cool. Well, good stuff. Yeah, I think that's all I got. Unless there's any yeah, more that's, questions. That's all I got. This is the smoothest stop and go drive I've ever had with Open Pilot. Like, mm, usually yeah. you're like, you know, because it's, exactly. it's right floor, and then it's gonna, it's, you know, some guy moved up five feet and it, it's ready. Yeah, but, no, but it's, now it's really gradual and really it's because nice. Because of the users, man. You guys labeled this. This is, uh, this is you guys in action. Thanks for driving well, everybody. The comma fleet combined. Yes. Wow, look at that. I mean, that was amazing. Um, AEB isn't affected by anything like this. Like the Toyota does the AEB. Yeah, I know there's no end-to-end uh, -end AEB. No. Uh, at least not the, the different one. Then I mean, we do have uh, a vision-based AEB that will trigger if it thinks there's going to be very high deceleration according to the model, but it's not, uh, it's not perfect. There's where we work, San Diego City. <laughs> Back home. Back home. Great. Well, yeah, we'll see you all in another stream at some point. Uh, but really get that comma three now if you're at all interested. Be sure to share the deal with your friends, anyone who has a compatible car. It's really the time to get one right now. So I highly recommend getting one uh, while it's $200 off. Exactly. And the socks. Cool. Best socks. Cool. See you guys. See you guys. Bye.